32 years passed since the Kojali genocide in which more than 600 Azerbaijanis killed by Armenian army. 32 years ago, the Kojali genocide was committed and Kojali city was occupied by the Armenian armed forces with the help of the post-Soviet army's 366th Motor Rifle Regiment. Azerbaijan marks the next anniversary of the bloody tragedy. Recall that on the night of February the 25th to 26th, 1992, Armenian forces with the help of the former Soviet 366th Motor Rifle Regiment invaded Kojali village, which had been under blockade since October 1991. All roads leading to the city were blocked and the only available transport was via helicopter. Continuous gunfire began on the evening of February the 25th, 1992, when 2,500 civilians remaining in the village left their territory with the hope of reaching Agdam, Armenians started to shoot at people. As a result of this tragedy, 613 Kojali civilians, including 63 children, 106 women and 70 elderly people were killed. Eight families were annihilated, 130 children lost one of their parents and another 25 lost both of them. 76 out of 487 people wounded by an enemy bullet were children. 1,275 Kojali residents were taken prisoner and 150 went missing. On September the 27th, 2022, the Azerbaijani army launched a counter-offensive to liberate the lands occupied by the Armenian armed forces for almost 30 years. During the 44-day fighting, five cities, four settlements and 286 villages were liberated. The city of Kojali was cleared of separatists on September the 19th to the 20th, 2023, as a result of local anti-terrorist measures carried out by the Azerbaijani army in Karabakh. On October the 15th, 2023, President Ilham Aliyev raised the state flag of the Republic of Azerbaijan in the city of Kojali, along with Agdara and Azgaran, Khojavand and Hankandi. On February the 7th, 2024, extraordinary presidential elections of the Republic of Azerbaijan were held in Kojali District 2. The leaders of the military junta regime who participated in the Kojali tragedy were arrested and brought to Baku and are currently being interrogated under the laws of Azerbaijan. Russia may annex another European country. Russian President Vladimir Putin may announce the annexation of the pro-Russian breakaway region of Transnistria, the Institute for the Study of War, ISW, has said. While the Washington think tank said such a possibility was unlikely in the short term, its report describes a continuing hybrid operation by Moscow to destabilize the former Soviet state which borders Ukraine, according to Newsweek. Internationally recognized as part of Moldova, whose European Union aspirations have angered the Kremlin, Transnistria is located between the Dniestr River and the Moldovan-Ukrainian border. Moldova has no control over the Russian-speaking region that claimed independence after the collapse of the USSR, sparking an intervention by Moscow. Russian troops remain in the territory. While Transnistria's independence is not recognized by Moscow or the international community, the territory where Russian troops are based remains a useful tool for the Kremlin to stop Moldova from seeking greater ties with the EU and NATO. The ISW said that the Transnistrian Congress of Deputies held a rare meeting in their capital, Tiraspol. During it, they blamed Chisinau for destroying the region's economy and violating the freedoms of population of around half a million. Transnistrian opposition activist Gennady Sioba said that deputies will ask on February the 28th for Moscow to annex Transnistria, a day before Putin addresses the Russian Federal Assembly, Moldovan outlet Deshaid reported. ISW said it could see Putin in the most dangerous course of action declare Russia's annexation of Transnistria during his planned address, although that appears unlikely. The Russian president will more likely welcome whatever action the Transnistrian Congress of Deputies takes and offer observations on the situation. The ISW said the deputies will likely either initiate a new referendum seeking Moscow's annexation 
or demand action on ballots held in 2006 unrecognized internationally, one of which backed joining Russia, the ISW said. Putin will likely welcome whatever actions the Congress takes, although he may stop short of acting on a request for immediate annexation, it added. Russia occupied more than 62,000 square kilometers of Ukraine territory during the war. Since February the 24th, 2022, Russia has occupied more than 62,000 square kilometers of Ukraine. This was stated in the report of the Ukrainian Deep State Telegram channel. In the first week of military operations, Russia occupied part of Ukraine's Kyiv, Chernigov, Sum, Kharkiv, Zaporozhye, Kherson, Donetsk, and Luhansk regions. However, in late March to early April 2022, the Russian army was forced to leave the territory of the occupied Kyiv, Chernigov, and Sum provinces. On September the 6th, as a result of counter-offensive operations launched by the Ukrainian army, the occupied territories of Kharkiv region were cleared of Russians. As a result of September the 6th to October the 10th operations, Ukraine restored the state border in the direction of Kharkiv. In addition, some occupied territories of Donetsk and Luhansk regions were also liberated. The counter-offensive operations of the Ukrainian armed forces in the direction of Kherson, which began on August the 29th, ended on November the 11th with the withdrawal of the Russian army from the city of Kherson. As a result of this operation, the Russian army was forced to withdraw from the right bank of the Dnieper River. The counter-offensive operation launched by the Ukrainian army in the direction of Zaporozhye in June 2023 ended in failure. The Ukrainians could not fully create a line of defense, which the Russians called Surovikin's Line. As a result, the Ukrainian army was able to liberate only a few hundred square kilometers of territory. Currently, the Russian army is on the offensive and has recently occupied the city of Avdiivka.